And thank you for joining me today for our drawing lesson, Drawing with Miss Liberty. Today we're going to do this beautiful poster in an Art Nouveau style that has some typography in it, some organic elements, a subject, and some floral subjects in it. So this is my finished piece. Um, I added a little bit more uh, to the bottom, some more decoration um, than the original picture on the cover of the event. I uh, did this with a uh, felt tip marker and color pencil after sketching it with a pencil. So today our materials are color pencils um, and today I'm using purple, sorry, violet, green, yellow, and black. I'm also using a pencil today since we are sketching. That's pretty much all we need our pencil for is sketching. I recommend a lightweight pencil, so either an HB or lighter. You could use your number two pencil, but draw lightly, and I'm using a mechanical pencil. Um, you're also going to need an eraser, um, which I seem to be without, so I might need to leave you guys to go get my eraser. Uh, but I also have a felt tip marker. Today I specified that you need a finer felt tip marker. I'm using a brush felt marker. Um, if you use the regular size Sharpie, like this one here, it might be a little bit too thick. Um, so use a finer marker if you can, or a pen. Um, so I'll let you guys sit tight while I go get my eraser. Um, make sure you have all your materials, your pencil, color pencils, your pencil, your felt marker, your eraser, which I have to go get. Um, and also make sure you have uh, plenty of paper. So I have multiple sheets of paper. So in case I need to start over, um, there's no problem. And also you need a piece of paper to go behind for your felt marker not to bleed through. So let me give you a moment while I go get my eraser. I'll be right back. Okay, now I have my eraser, we're all set. Um, so I wanted to do a little bit of talking at the beginning of today's lesson um, before we really get into it. First, I want to expose myself a little bit, be a little bit vulnerable, um, just if you're having trouble with your confidence in drawing. I wanna let you know that I don't just get up and make a masterpiece on the sheet of paper and it's exactly the way I want it and it's absolutely perfect. Well, let me show you what it took for me to get to this masterpiece. So before I did this, I did a practice version, which looks a little bit different than my final piece, but I sketched this before I got to here. And before I got to here, I did a bunch of little versions. So first I had to figure out how I was gonna lay out my design, the composition, some more work with the composition. And then for details for my subject, I had to figure out how I wanted to draw my B. Um, and more work with the composition. I wasn't done there. I didn't just do those four, but I worked on it some more. It took me a while to get the B the way I wanted to draw it. And it took me a while to get the composition the way that I liked it. So if you don't get this right away, trust me, not even the professionals do. We got through a few versions before we got to here. Now back to talk a little bit more about today's project. So today's project, I specified that we're doing an Art Nouveau style poster. So Art Nouveau, um, is um, a, a time in art uh, around the 19th century, so that's the 1800s into the um, early 1900s, um, that was really popular in Europe and America, and it was very ornamental. There were lots of decoration, lots of organic shapes, not a lot of angular shapes. Um, my favorite art, art, artist from the Art Nouveau movement would be Mucha or Klimt. You can look those up and they were very popular artists during the arts and crafts movement. Um, in today's poster, we're gonna use some balance, really popular in Art Nouveau posters, specifically Alphonse Mucha's is symmetry. So our background is going to be fairly symmetrical um, compared to our subject in the piece, which is gonna be a little bit of asymmetry, so a little bit heavier on one side than the other. Um, we're also gonna talk about composition. We have subject, 
we have typography, we have background, and we have decoration. And we had to figure out how we're going to put all of that in the page. Um, there's also contrast. Art Nouveau style is very um, emphasizing on the line. So we outline everything before we added our color. Um, emphasis, we have our subject in the middle. We made it very obvious that this is where I want you to look. And then there's also the flow or the movement of the piece. I don't know if you notice the circular flow in our piece, um, but very important in graphic design, which uh, was a popular movement during the Art Nouveau movement, is we want people to move through our piece. So I want you to read the spring and come through the flowers and end up with our bumblebee. And the way we compose this image, we get that. So are you ready to get started? Let's get started. I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to get rid of all my practices, and get to my masterpiece sheet. So let's get these out of the way. All right, so like in our other lessons, in order to help us with our composition, we're going to lightly, with our pencil, and you might not be able to see my lines, um, but you should be able to see other lines. If anybody's watching um, and they want to send... Uh, an invite to today's video to Erin Baki. She texts me and I haven't, I can't text her back because I'm filming, um, but she's on Facebook. So we're gonna divide the page in half horizontally, very lightly because we're going to erase these lines. These are not permanent lines. You don't have to get it right the first time. And then we're gonna divide it in half vertically. So we can see where the center of our page is. So in our original, what we did is we outlined the poster so it looks like a poster printed in the sheet of paper we also did a big circle in the middle so what we're going to do is we're going to draw lines like a half an inch quarter of an inch around our paper so you're going to start and i'm going to do it a little bit darker than you should just so you can see my lines so we're going to come in the page and we're going to make a line stay the same distance from the edge of the page and then we're gonna round our corners. We're not gonna make square corners. And then we're gonna go around here. We're gonna get back to this corner. We're gonna curve it. Cause we want rounded corners. We want organic shapes. You don't really get into the very geometric shapes until the next movement in art, which was art deco or art deco. And then we come back up here and around this corner. So there you are. You should just have a big rectangle on your page like that with rounded corners. Okay. So next in the middle of our page, right where this cross, we're going to make a big circle and we want our circle not to touch the edge of the page. We want to leave some space, but you're going to do the best circle you can do. And it's easy because you have this cross line here to try and make it the same on all four quarters. Remember to use your sketching hand. We're drawing lightly because we're going to erase and we're going to outline. So we got a big circle right there. I'll let you guys catch up. So remember we did a rectangle with rounded corners. You don't have to have straight lines. Um, part of uh, the style of this is that it looks hand drawn with organic sinuous lines. So we did a rectangle just off the edge of our page and then we did a big circle in the middle and our bee and our flowers are going to end up right here in the image. Next we're going to do the shape where we're going to put our uh, our spring lettering. So what we're going to do is the same how we went in a little bit and just trace the outside of the paper. You're going to go in a little bit and just trace and mimic the lines that you just made on the outside. You can go about halfway down like that and then curve it and now go around the circle you just drew. And it might help to do one half and then the other. So this is this, so there's my circle and then there's my line where my letters are gonna go. And then you gotta go across the top. Don't go all the way to the edge because remember we're staying from a distance come down about halfway. You want to be the same distance down as this one is because we want some symmetry. So if you want to make a little mark there, make a little mark there, come down and then come back around. 
pick it back up from here. And if you need to turn the page in order to make these lines, like if you need to go like this, go ahead and go like that. This is just sketching. You're going to outline everything, so make everything light. So we did that up there, and we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So I'm going to move my page up for you. So we're going to go up from the line we make to make the rectangle. We're going to go across there. So we're not going to make square corners. We're going to make round corners. Go up there. Go about halfway up, then turn around and go around the circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. We want this to look hand done. You want to go the same distance as this one, so right there. Come back down. And then connect it to this bottom one that we started. So now we have our layout. We're going to put our typography up here. We're going to put our subject in the middle here. And then we're going to put our extra decorations down here. So next for the sketching, we've done the layout, let's start sketching. So we want our bee to go here. Now our bee and our flower are the subject, so it doesn't make any sense for us to put the bee right in the middle because we want the subject to incorporate all these elements. So we're going to move them over. Instead of putting the bee in the center, we put what's in between the flower and the bee in the center, so right about there. So if this is the center, you want to go up and to the right, and that's where your bee's head is going to be. You draw a circle for your bee's head. And then your flower is going to go over here. So you're just going to take a curve because we're going to use a line as reference for our sketching. So just make a line, a curved line. It's going to curve down here and it's going to come and it's going to tuck itself in right down there. It's not going to go past that line because in Art Nouveau we use framing techniques and our subject is going to go behind and in front of the frame. So back here he's going behind the frame and up here he's going in front of the frame. We also have a third flower, another lavender, which is going to come down here and he's going to balance out the weight from the other lavender. So you're going to come down here and do another curved line that's going to feed down to here. It's going to go behind the frame. So let's finish up our B. So we got our B. We have a circle which we're gonna do, instead of the body, let's make that circle, instead of the head, let's make that circle the body. So that's the center of the body. So let's put the head over here, which is about the same size as the body circle, and then the, the last section of the B is gonna be a little bigger, and that's gonna go right there. So you see how I did three circles? We started with the middle circle, then we put a head up top, and then we put the back side right here. All right, before we get into the details, we're gonna keep sketching. So let's go ahead and do our wings. So our bee's wings attach to the middle of his body. So first we're gonna do the wing that's the closest to us. Because it's the closest to us and nothing is in front of it, we're gonna be able to see the whole thing. So you're kinda of gonna make a heart that doesn't connect. So we're gonna do the first part of the wing and then the second part of the wing. It's just a lopsided heart. And then the wing on the other side of the bee, well, that goes behind the first wing. So we're not going to see it. The, the wings are trans, translucent, so you can see through them. But for our piece, we're just not going to show it. So it's going to come from the back, and it's going to disappear behind the other wing. So you don't see that. Next, we're going to give our bee his, little, uh, his legs. So we're going to do six legs on him. So we've got two up front, so one leg. And we're doing these little organic shapes because it'll look good when we do the marker. And the other leg is on the other side, so it's going to be smaller because it's further away and on the other side. And then he's got two legs that come back here. And those are the ones on our side. And then the ones on the other side of the bee, you could barely see them. So we'll just do one on the other side. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch our flowers. Um, we're not going to add the detail to the bee yet because when we're sketching, we just want to get everything down. So our flower in our original piece, uh, the lavender comes down to about where the circle ends. So we're going to do that here. And in order to make the flower, this is what I did for the lavender. So we're going to start down here, and I'm going to make an upside down teardrop like that. And then all the way up the line um, that I made for my reference, I'm going to keep doing these like upside down horseshoe loops. And I'm going to go all the way up. Use a light pencil. I'm going dark so that you can see me. So 
but we are going to go everything over everything with a felt marker later. These floral elements are very important in Art Nouveau. You see there? So that's the front side of my lavender. Those are the petals that are facing me. So now I'm going to do the petals on this side. And so those are just, we're doing hearts again. And you just go all the way down. So you get to the bottom there. And then you do the other side. Doesn't matter if they don't match up. It's all about the rhythm and the pattern you're creating. And there you go. You have the top of your lavender. I'm going to take it down one more notch because what we created there is a tangent and that's where the lines of one subject run directly into the lines of another subject. It does a weird thing visually. Um, so we try to avoid that. So we're going to do our lavender on the other side. We're going to bring it down to about here. So start with your upside down teardrop and then start doing the loops all the way up. until you get to the end of there and then come down with your hearts on the other side. And then do the other side. All right, let me give you guys a minute to catch up. So, so far we've done our rectangle, um, our frame on our Art Nouveau poster. Went all the way around the outside of the page. Then we did our circle to emphasize where our subject is. And then we created the frame for our letters, which simply traced the inside of between our circle and the frame of our page. And then we did the frame of where our decor is going to go. Then we sketched our B with three circles, two circles that are the same, about the same size as each other that overlap. And then one bigger circle for the rear of the B. We did our wings, so our wings in the front, we can see the whole thing, and then our wing in the back, we only see part of it. Same thing happened with our legs here. We did our six legs. Three of them are in the front, so we can see all of them. The other three are behind the bee, so right now we can only see two, and they're smaller than the others. Hopefully you got a chance to do our pretty little lavender. We did the petals, so now it's time to do the leaves. So we're gonna go ahead and make our stems a little bit thicker, so they're gonna be more than just a line. So go ahead and just make another line next to the line you originally made, and then you get some thickness to your stem. So we're gonna do it over here too. I don't know if you could see what I did there, but I just made another line, that's it. And then we're gonna do the leaves on the lavender as well. So I'm gonna put four leaves down here and they kind of look like that. You just do a little fin and then do another one. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other one. Right. We can add some detail to our bee if you feel like that. So what I did with my bee is they have a little beak, but I kind of made it look like a nose. So we bring a little point down to the end and then it's a circle. So another teardrop or another raindrop. So I'm going to say his nose is going to go here because I want him to be next to there. So we're going to start from that point and we're going to trace our circle darker. Don't go super dark, but I'm going darker so that you can see. And so you kind of make a point there. So it's like a petal, just like the petal down here. We're mimicking a lot of the same shape. And then for our bee's uh, eye, we're going to do big eyes because bees have big eyes. So we're only going to see one side of his face, so he's only going to have one eye. And I want to do big eye. Now bees don't have uh, pupils like we do, but we want to make our bee look very cute. Um, so we're going to give him big cute eyes. So we're going to make his pupils really big. So you see that? That's going to be all the pupil and then that's going to be the white. And then we're going to put a little glare of light here. And all this, when we color it in, is going to be colored in with the Sharpie. So you'll see that right there. So if you give him a little bit of a brow, these don't have brows, but this is a little cartoon. And now we're going to do his antenna. So the first antenna is on this side of his head, so we can see the whole thing. And you give him a little thing on top. The other antenna is behind his head, so you're only going to see where it comes up behind. It's not going to go down in front. 
and it's going to be a little bit smaller than the one in front of it. Our bee is a bumblebee, so he's going to be fuzzy, so we're going to use our little texture lines. This fuzz is going to stop there, but we're not going to see it go behind the wing, and then we're going to start here and go all the way around the middle of his body. Don't go through his legs. And then we're gonna put a little bit of his fuzz in front of his wing, down where the wing attaches. We're gonna make his rear fuzzy as well. So just go ahead and go all the way around. We're gonna go over this with marker and erase, so don't worry about your sketch line. And then we're gonna put some more fuzzy on him because he is a fuzzy bee. He is a fuzzy bee. So these lines help to suggest that he is a fuzzy bee. Next we're going to put the little veins in his wings and what I do for the bee wings if I have to do it really quickly is I do kind of like a leaf. So I take the line all the way through the middle and then go like this, like that, like this, and like that. As simple as that. You can make it more complicated if you want to put that much detail in it, but you don't have to. And then on the wing behind his front wing, you can't really see the center of it, so we're just going to see the parts that come off the edge like that. So now we have some detail on our B. We just have to ink it and color it. We have our lavender. We just have to ink it and color it. So now it's time to move on to our typography. So what we're doing, typography is the use of type in art and design. Um, we're going to use ours to make a poster and it's going to be a title poster. Uh, we are going to use um, a serif font. So a serif font, let me get my sketch paper. A serif font, um, for example, let me use an L. So a sans serif font is just the lines. There's nothing decorative on it, nothing going on, but we're doing Art Nouveau. So we want to do decoration in our type. So a serif font is gonna have our regular letter, but then it's gonna have some little ornaments on it. So if you've ever seen a typewriter or a newspaper, there's a little bit more going on to the typography. So we're gonna do a more decorative font. Um, the word we're going to do at the top of our page is spring. Let me write that down for you. So spring, spring has six letters. So this is gonna make it fairly easy for us to balance out our letters on the paper. And I'm gonna go really slowly with you um, to go over this because it does take some practice, take some sketching. You might not get it right the first time. You might have to erase and do it again. And even I might have to do it too. So come along with me. So let's get, move this down so you guys can see this. Spring needs to fit in this space and we're going to we're gonna transform the letters so that they fit into the space we want it to go into. So what I'm going to do is I got six letters, so I'm gonna divide this into six spaces. Uh, luckily, I already divided my page in half. So I have, we're gonna give that a sketch line. You don't want these to be dark lines. Remember, you're gonna erase. So we have it in center. So now you wanna divide each center into thirds. I mean, each half into thirds. So I've got a line here. So I'm going to do one letter here, one letter here, one letter here. I'm going to do the same over here. And then one letter here, one letter here, one letter here. You might need to move them over. You want them to be about as even as you can make them. And when I draw my letters, I don't want them to touch the edges. I want them to come up a little bit. You see how the letters kind of float in the space? So sketch very lightly. We're going to start with the S. So we're going to Try to take up this space, but not touch the edges. And the Art Nouveau style is where it's gonna dip down into that space. And we got our S. And we're gonna do our P. Remember, we don't want it to touch the edges. It's gotta take up the space in the middle. There's our P. And we need our R. Remember, you want it to float, so don't touch the edges. We need our R. It's okay if some letters look a little warped because we're warping them on purpose. And we gotta do our eye. And I'm doing an eye with the top and bottom on it. Now, what you wanna do to make it Art Nouveau style is follow this curve. So instead of making a straight line, 
follow the curve. And then our N, remember, fill up the space, but don't touch the edges. And it's okay to use curvy lines because we're using a decorative typeface. And then the G, finally, the G is a little difficult because it's pretty warped down here and it's already a round letter. Come down, come back up, and like that. So there we've got our spring. And to make the letters a little more decorative, we're going to put the little caps on it. So we're going to do our little S. And we're going to bring a little decorative item in there. We're going to bring a little decorative item in there. We're going to do the same thing to our P. Put a little cap on the end of it there. Do the same thing to our R. A little cap there. A little cap there. A little something there. Do it on the ends of our eyes. We're going to outline all this with felt so you felt tip marker so you can make it thicker. After that, we're going to do our N. And we're going to make this like a big chunky end on the end. We're going to do a little bit there and there. We're also going to do ours a uh, modern style, um, which is thick and thin. So all of the lines going this way are going to stay thin and all the lines going this way are going to get thick. So if you've ever done thick and thin letters, so that's where you'd just do another, another line on the side and make it thick where it's vertical and thin where it's horizontal. So we're gonna do that on our S. So that means this line needs to be thicker. Let me let you guys see that. And then this line needs to be thicker and then this line needs to be thicker as well so i think that one needs to be a lot thicker same thing with our p if you made a little notch just go ahead and extend it the curve of our p we need that to be thicker the r again we need to make our little decor thing a little wider outside of our r I'm not going to do anything to the leg. Our I needs to be thicker. That side of our N. Just make the little thing bigger. The inside of our G. On that side. And this side. That was kind of rough the way I showed you guys how to do that, but. If you, get, if you practice, you could do it better. If this is your first time filming a video to do this, you'll get better the next time. That's what I tell myself. So there, we have our spring. We have our B with details. Now we just have to do our decor on the bottom. So what I did on my old page is I did some flourishes. So what I did is I uh, created some, some balance and some movement by using elements from my subject in my decor. So these are the little lavender petals and I did a little Art Nouveau design. In order to get that design, what I did is I used, kept my center line from when I split everything in half. And just like we traced um, to make the frame for the words and the frame for the decor, we're gonna make another frame. We're gonna start here and we're gonna go up. If you get right about here, and then we're gonna trace in like this. And you're gonna go about the same distance from the center as you are from this side. I'm gonna come down, same distance, I'm gonna come around. It's kind of like making a puzzle and then come back up. And then what I did is I did this. And then I did this. Like that. So I'm gonna do it again on the other side. So we started here, we went up until we were about the same distance away. We came down and around. We found the middle, but we didn't connect to it. We came down, we came over here, and we came back up. Important in Art Nouveau is a, a bit of symmetry. So whatever you do on one side in the background, you should do on the other side in the background. So then I'm gonna add my petals. I'm gonna add my petals on this side. There we go. So now it's time to outline. We have a really great work of art right here. Have you caught up with me?
Let me give you a minute. So we did our letters, we made them thick and thin. We put some little decorative caps on them. We did our B with detail. We did our extra decoration on the bottom. So let's go ahead and outline. So go ahead and let's start with the letters. So where you made it thick, you're just gonna fill that in with your, with your felt marker. So you can go ahead and just trace over the lines that you made. Excuse the noise my marker makes. And then just go thick. Remember to have a sheet of paper underneath here. And you can make your letters thicker if you mess up. It's easy when you use the Sharpie. You just, just fill it in. Nobody has to know you made a mistake. And when you're making a work of art in general, nobody ever has to know that you made a mistake. It's not even a mistake until you say it is. Sometimes accidents happen and they're beautiful. You see my letters aren't perfect, it's okay. Remember I said I wanted to make that big on the bottom. We'll make this one big too. That way it balances it out. Balance out the weight. You don't want your composition to be too heavy on one side. So we did our letters. How do you like yours? Mine came out all right. Okay, so next let's do our bumblebee. I'm gonna do our subjects before we do the framing so we don't accidentally put our frames through our subjects. So let's start by outlining our bee's head. It's okay if you go through the antenna because the antenna is just a line so he won't get lost. Remember that second antenna went behind the head so he won't go in front. Let's do his eyes. So we got the big circle and then his pupil, then the glare, and then you can just fill this part in. Like that. Um, next we could do his wing, wing in front. Wing and back, and then the little veins in the wings. Remember, we're not we're not trying to be anatomically correct here. It doesn't need to look like a real bee. Um, and then we do the fuzz. Don't put the fuzz over the front legs. Remember, because the front legs are in front of the fuzz. can put the fuzz where the wings connect and you can put the fuzz where the legs connect but don't cover them up and then we do the fuzz on the inside okay and then the fuzz on his rear end if anybody knows what these actual parts of the bee are called I don't know. welcome you to comment these are also going to help us tell where our stripes are going to go but right now it's just for texture so we got a nice fuzzy bee right there we're going to make his legs 
black. Hey Tim, are you do are you going along with me? Are you doing a an Art Nouveau poster? I'm just gonna make his legs all black. Make he'll stand out that way. And remember the legs on the other side, we can barely see them, so they kind of just stick out. Next we're going to do the lavender. The lavender is nice and calming because it's a repetitive pattern. Um, so start with the bottom one and then work your way up. So here's the bottom one, it's an upside down raindrop, and then a bunch of like hooks or upside down U's over the top of it. And just keep going. Thorax! Thanks Aaron. Thorax. Yes, I'll stop calling it the rear end. And just keep going along, nice and nice and tranquil. Hopefully your marker doesn't make a obnoxious noise like mine does. There we go, I did that side, now to do the other side. And we did that side, so now we got, this is a little more difficult because we have a felt marker and we need to make these thin lines right here. So get in really close and be careful, um, but you, that's why I wanted you to use a finer tip marker because you have to trace, and I don't have a steady hand, I don't know if you do. So trace the outside, and trace the other side. That's as good as I can do. If you could do better, you could do better. And then I'm gonna do the leaves. And it's okay if you don't go perfectly over your pencil lines, you're just going to erase them. And then do the other piece of lavender. So start out with the one on the bottom, and then go over the top. I did that and then go with the hearts down the other side. Doing a hair braid is very similar to the way I'm doing the lavender. There we go. And then again, we have this difficult stem because the lines are really thin. If you can't do these thin lines, just go ahead and just make it a line just like that. That's perfectly fine too. See mine, you can barely see it, that's okay. And then do these on the side. All right, so we finished our subjects. Now to do our framing. So make sure you don't go through any of the subjects when you do your framing. So let's start um, by doing the decor, which are our little curvy lines in here. So go ahead and what, what I do is I start where I started the original one and just go ahead and outline it. And then when I get here, I kind of stop before it touches. And then I pick it up again and I stop before it touches. Try to get as close as you can, but don't touch the thing. And then come down, and then there's this little piece right here. And it goes here. Don't be afraid to move the paper if you need to go like this to get a nice curve. Make your tools work for you, you don't work for them. And then do my lavender petals. And this one, they're upside down. And I'm going to do the other side. Let's see, I'm going to turn my page like this because it's easier for me to make this motion. And remember, your lines don't have to be perfect because we want an organic look. I'm going to turn the page again. You see how I didn't go over my lines perfectly? That's okay. 
So let's do the outside of our frame, and I'm going to turn the page for this because it's easier for me to make a line using my whole arm. You notice how I use like this instead of like this. It's easier for me to make the lines that way, especially when you're making straight lines. It doesn't have to be perfect. We want an organic look to this. Don't forget to round the corners. Okay, so you should have the frame done. You should have the lettering done. You should have your subject completely inked and your decor ink. So let's just do the frame on the letters and the decor. So again, I'm gonna turn the page when I need to so that I can make the straightest lines I can make. Easier to make a straight line when you're moving your whole arm than opposed to moving your, your wrist. Okay, here's the hard part, doing the circle. So this is where you really want to turn the page. Remember your frame shouldn't be touching your letters. Okay, here's where we meet up with one of our subjects. So we're going to come close to the subject, but we're not going to touch. And then we're going to come on the other side, on the other side of our subject, and continue our lines like that. Now, it kind of shows a little bit right here. You can make a little line, but it'd have to be a barely a little bit of a line. And then we're going to do the framing on the bottom, which is the same thing. Move the page if it's easier for you to make your straight lines. Now this is the one time it does touch because this frame is actually in front of our subject. Everywhere else our subject is in front of the frame. I'm gonna come on down. And this is where our frame goes behind our subject, so you gotta stop, pick it up from the other side, and then stop the other side and then connect all right and the last thing to outline is the circle that's the hardest part so go ahead and start making your circle you can start anywhere but just remember your subject is in front of the frame so don't go over your subject so we're gonna stop we're gonna pick it back up You guys notice mine is not perfect. If you got it perfect the first time, I applaud you. Like I showed you before, I didn't even get it perfect the first time. I had to do this a number of times. All right, so we have an outline of everything we're going to color in. Now it's time to use that eraser. In my last video, I was really, really rough with my paper um, and I ripped up my paper, so I want you to be more gentle. Um, you really only need to erase uh, as much as you can. You don't need to erase everything. The only part of the image that's going to not be colored is the center of the circle and the outline. So if you have pencil marks that are visible where we're coloring, you won't be able to see them after we color. So go ahead and start erasing. Oh, I forgot we gave our bee an eyebrow. Let's give him his eyebrow. Eyebrow. For some reason, I like to erase from the center out. And if you're viewing right now, thank you very much for viewing. It is very encouraging um, to have people participate. Uh, it's it's been a it's been a long quarantine, and this is how me as an artist I connect with people. 
and you participating with me helps me feel connected and I hope it helps you feel connected too. All right, so we erased all of our lines. Now it's time to color, our favorite part, right? Well, actually, pause, wait for a moment. So, if you're a parent, or you are a parent, um, or you're not a parent, and you're just doing an art lesson, um, if you have a scanner or a copy machine, you can take this inked version, this outline version, this felt tip version, and you can scan it in, um, and you can color it on your computer, or you could print out extra copies for yourself to color, but I think this would be a really great opportunity to preserve it um, in this stage, uh, so you can do as many color combinations as you like. Um, you could also do the same thing with all of our other art lessons that we outlined before we colored. So let's start coloring. Go ahead and grab your lavender or your violet and start coloring your lavender. You don't have to worry about going over the lines if you have color pencils. Um, this is a Prismacolor pencil and it doesn't cover my Sharpie lines so you can go right over them. Uh, you might want to test other color pencils to see if they work the same way. If you're using crayons, um, they will color cover up the Sharpie so you have to color within the lines. So why don't you guys take some time with me and let's color our lavender. Like I've said before, starting out lighter is better. Don't apply too much pressure because then you have to apply that amount of pressure throughout the whole thing. You can always make it darker and add more layers, but you can't make it lighter. Yes, Tim, I like the line shaky too. I like a really organic hand-drawn look to it. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with the hand-drawn look, you can use rulers. Um, I don't use rulers very often when my drawing, um, but you can if you wanted straight, straight, straight lines. If we wanted our lettering to look a lot better, we could pull out a ruler and start measuring. Um, but we wanted to do a project that we could complete in a comfortable amount of time and hopefully this is a good amount of time for you. Feel free to take your time coloring. You can always pause and rewind. But at this point, you probably don't need me. Um, you could just color freely on your own, but I can help guide you what parts to color and how to color. So there, my lavender is purple. This is also lavender petals in our decor, so we're also gonna color those purple. Right. Okay, we want a chance to catch up. I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna grab my green and we're going to do the stem and the leaves of our lavender. Not a whole lot of green being used for this part, but we're also gonna use the green to outline our frame. So like I said, start out light because you can't go lighter once you've gone dark. We're coloring this part, so the first part of the frame. We want to do consistent pressure and that's why I'm going sideways. I have more control over the pressure I hold it like a pair of chopsticks. So 
It's also easier to cover larger areas this way. Now remember, our bee is in front of the frame, so we're not gonna color behind our wings. Don't be afraid to turn the paper around so that it's easier for you to use your utensils, your tools. I'm gonna see how I have my pencil worn down on the side. I'm holding it sideways. Almost done. All right, we're done with our green. Um, next, I wanted to, uh, in order to pull everything together, so we've got the green in the, in the stem and the leaves, we've got the green in the frame, now we're going to take the, perp the, lavender, the violet <laughs> from our lavender and we're going to put it up here with our spring letters. So like I said, your color pencils might cover your, your felt marker, so try to go around it if they do, otherwise you could just color right over it. Remember to use consistent pressure. You can always go darker, but you can't go lighter. Covering up your Sharpie, color without going over your Sharpie. You're not in a hurry, probably. You can take longer than this video to color if you want, but I, however, have a time limit. go. So we've got the violet at the top. Now if you want to, you could leave this down here white. Let's go ahead and finish the rest of this and see if we want to do the yellow down here like I did in my final piece. But after I was done, I was like, oh, I don't know if I really like the yellow. This is why we do multiple versions. So we'll do that last to see if we really want to do it. So let's start with our bumblebee. So our bumblebee is black and yellow stripe. Um, we're going to go ahead and his head is going to be black. So we're gonna use the black color pencil, not the Sharpie because then our details would disappear or not the felt marker. So just the black color pencil. You come in here and shade that with the black. Don't color the whites of his eyes. And we're going to say that our bee has pollen on his antennas, so we're going to color these yellow. And we're going to make the first stripe black. So with the black color pencil, we're going to go in here and shade. It adds more texture if you shade in the same direction as your uh, fuzz lines, your texture lines. You kind of have pencil strokes. So the next one's going to be yellow, so this one's going to be black. See how I'm going in the, going in the same direction as the fuzz lines. And then 
going to flip it over so we're going to make the next one black because I, I want a fairly black V. I want them only to have a little bit of yellow. So then that next stripe will be yellow and then the back one is black. And you can get in there, you can get dark no matter what your felt marker is going to show up. All right, now let's go in with our yellow. And again, to mimic that texture, you kind of want to color in the same direction that your fuzz lines are going in. And then this stripe right here. And I think we have to put a little bit down here. Darken his head a little bit more. Remember, we can go darker, but we can't go lighter. I never finished coloring down here. That happens. If you get distracted, that's okay. Some artists, if you're like me, I can get distracted and move on to the next step too fast, but it's okay. We can always come back. All right. So what do you think? Should we color this yellow or should we just leave it white? What do you think? I'll take any votes. I'll take the first vote. Yellow or white? I'm going in with the yellow just because it makes it more interesting. We're going to go yellow because we're going to take the yellow from the bee and we're going to pull it into this down here. So go ahead and just start coloring. The cool thing about scanning this and printing out multiple ones, multiple versions, is that if I don't like this one, I could just start coloring the next one. Never be afraid to start over. In art and in life because you never know what's going to happen next. Apply a consistent amount of pressure. You can always make it darker, but you can't make it lighter. If your coloring medium covers up your felt marker, don't color over it, color around it. <laughs> Aaron like white. Yeah, I like the white too. But I also like yellow. If you didn't want to color the bottom half of yours yellow, don't color it. In fact, you can use any colors you wanted to. You can make pink lavender if you want to. You can add some blue to the violet in your lavender. That would probably make a more appropriate color. All right. So since it's an Art Nouveau piece, we're gonna do a fancy Art Nouveau signature. Instead of by Miss Liberty, we're gonna do um, my signature, which is an LP. Um, and we're going to make a little mark out of it. So let's say you have my LP would be an L and then a P. If you have like an MS, you do like an M and S, kind of overlap it to make it square. Erin, Erin Baki, she would do an E and then a B over the top, you overlap your first initial with your last or make a little design, so down here. I'm going to do a little LP, a little Art Nouveau signature. Let's see. We have some, any other initial signatures we could do? We have uh, Janet Lunax, so she would do a J, L, like that, and just give yourself a nice little Art Nouveau signature at the bottom. All right, guys. So if you finished, Oh, Tim, Urban, we got a T-U. We got a T. Oh, you have a lot of options, Tim. You could go like this. 
You're just trying to create something that fits into a square frame, ideally. So like that. Want to put a T? Maybe like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but hopefully you've finished, um, or you're getting close to finishing, or you're thinking about finishing later. Um, you've made an Art Nouveau style poster with typography in it, a number of elements arranged on a page. Um, you did some floral elements. You learned how to draw some lavender and a bumblebee. You might have learned a little bit of history or thought about something to research, like 19th century art history in Europe and America. If you're interested in the Art Nouveau mov movement or the arts and crafts movement, um, if you uh, would like to watch these videos at a later time, please subscribe and like my videos on YouTube. Just search Liberty Pearson on all social medias and YouTube to see more of my content. I'll be doing another Facebook Live next, uh, next Wednesday at 3 p.m. I may not keep doing them live. I might start just uploading them to YouTube, but as long as I get some viewers that tune in to the live uh, videos, I'll keep doing them live. Thank you so much in participating in Drawing with Miss Liberty today. I hope you learned something and created something beautiful. Thank you.